Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here. Thank you for joining us for another Monday market update, 9 a.m. Eastern, every Monday morning. Get you ready for the week. Stocks to watch, economic news to highlight. Stocks did break a multi week rally last week, and investors are worried that if this is something more than short term profit taking or something worse. The Fed has signaled that it's just did its last rate hike for the cycle last month, and inflation has been easing. But then again, the jobs report just put in its worst release in years, and the companies are reporting three consecutive quarters of declining earnings. To put it all together, JP Morgan put out a scenario analysis that we can use to dive into and see how to invest for whatever the market throws at us. I'll take you through the numbers next. Stick around after that, though, for this week's market update, stocks to watch, economic news that you want to see. If you want to see the stocks I'm buying for the next 30 years, my forever stocks, click on the link I'll leave in the description below. This is a free report I put together with The Motley Fool, my five forever stocks, the stocks following those biggest trends in the market. Just click through that link, you'll see the first stock immediately, then they're gonna email you the next four stocks. And here we see that analysis. The trading desk at JP Morgan put out this interesting kind of scenario analysis last week, it remarked that a new record for stocks in the S&P 500 feels inevitable. Of course, that was just before the midweek sell-off and is a fairly risk-free thing to say when you consider that, yes, eventually someday stocks will trade at a new high. But I'll agree that the market does seem to be in a very good place. And while the economy is still slowing down, the odds of higher stock prices over the next year are looking good. Along with some comments, the analyst released a probability estimate that we'll look at for different scenarios here. Talking through the scenarios and just how to invest in each is not only going to be a great way to position your portfolio, but also going to help generally make you a better investor. And we are actually not that far from the all-time record set in January 2021. Here you see the S&P 500. It touched 4,600 last week. That's less than 5% from that record high. And JP Morgan points to the likely end of the Fed rate hike cycle and the fact that the economy is still growing to say that stocks can keep rising. I've pointed this out over the last couple of months that with inflation coming down faster than expected, and that's if you don't look at gas prices, because that is one point of the economy that is rising uh, unexpectedly high. But X gas prices, core inflation, if that keeps on coming down, the Fed can stop raising rates. We see here the median probabilities on the FedWatch rate tool here on the CME group. This shows the median probability, so the expectations of what the Fed is going to do at its next meetings. Uh, this shows market odds for the Fed funds rate, which right now, over the next four meetings, we're stuck right at 525 to 550 that is the current target for the federal funds rate set by the fed set by the federal reserve that's five five and a quarter percent to five point five percent and but we do see that here in the march and beyond of next year the market expects the fed to start aggressively cutting interest rates supporting the economy bringing interest rates back down so if the economy even if the economy does start slowing they have that tool at their disposal to start cutting rates maybe even earlier than expected and to support the market. Taking all this into account, the trading desk there at JP Morgan put together this scenario analysis and the group's most likely outcome it finds, which it puts at 35% odds, is that the market pulls back slightly on some profit taking before the Fed's annual policy meeting at Jackson Hole later this month before rising further later in the year. Fed Chair Powell came out extremely hawkish, uh, favoring higher rates in his speech last year, which led to a 4% drop in stocks. And some investors could still be gun shy at, about that event. So that could cause some profit taking ahead of it, just in case he comes out with something similar this year. Now, the Fed's meeting in September follows closely on that though. And, and it's expected that the central bank is just gonna confirm the end of its rate hike cycle, which is why in this scenario that stocks are seen running higher after that first pullback. The second most likely outcome here, 30%, according to these analysts, is that stocks jump around, kind of chop around in a tight range, but ultimately go nowhere for the next several months. And that wouldn't be hard to believe either, right? With the market already up 20% so far this year, and investors still worried that those previous rate hikes are still going to affect the economy, really grind the economy to a halt. Great cuts may eventually help, but that still isn't until next year. And it hasn't saved corporations from right now reporting overall earnings growth that has declined 5% on a year-over-year -year basis. These remaining four scenarios here are lower odds and seems more like kind of a catch-all. The trading desk sees a 12.5% chance that stocks run higher with no pullback as the economy stays strong and inflation keeps coming down. Uh, another 10% odds are placed on a pullback and then sideways chopping market on that weaker economy, but still softening inflation. And then another scenario, 7.5% predicts the sideways market, but with no pullback. And then this last one, the group forecasts just 5% chance of a technical correction or a drop of 10% or more in stocks. So now I want to add up the odds for the similar scenarios in this and help us give us an idea of market direction and how to invest. So the positive scenarios here where stocks do head higher, odds are 47.5% that even if there is 
is a slight pullback in stocks, the market does head higher into the end of the year. We may have already seen some of that pullback, in fact, with last week's drop on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. The analysts don't give an estimate on how much that pullback could be, but it's usually within the range of 3 to 7%. So now what are some of the things you should watch for to see if that scenario is going to happen? Uh, that could happen if core inflation here on the 12th this week comes in below expectations, or even if that headline CPI is a little bit higher due to those booming gas prices, if the inflation doesn't, doesn't look like it's really ramping up again. Uh, investors would be worried that the Fed would in preview still higher rates at the Jackson Hole speeches, so that could spark that, that further pullback. Uh, for the pullback to be reversed then, the Fed would have to make it a point at the Jackson Hole or its September meeting to talk up that drop in inflation and a kind of a wait and see approach on rates. So to really confirm that they have stopped raising interest rates and may eventually even cut rates. Uh, the economy would have to hold up fairly well and with that monthly jobs report remaining positive and inflation continuing to come down. So in this kind of a scenario, of course, you would want to stay fully invested in stocks. In that pullback scenario, you might consider selling some covered calls expiring over the next couple of months or, or some of your riskier stocks. If the market does pull back even 3 to 5%, this is important here for a lot of you investors in those growth and techie stocks. You can expect a bigger drop of 10% plus in those big winners for the year. Okay, So the, the stocks that have gone up 30, 40, 50% and more, those are going to come back further if the entire market comes down 3 to three to 5 to 7%. Okay, For the most part, though, you can still say bullish and with a heavy stock portfolio or even some call options on stocks. Oddly enough, or maybe by design, if we add up some of these other scenarios, the chances of the market just trades sideways between 4,400 and 4,700 is also about 47.5% according to this trading desk. Here again, we see the possibility of a slight pullback. Those two pullback scenarios add up to about 45% together, but then a recovery and a range bound prices. And again, with the stock market already up 20% so far this year, this would not be difficult to see the market in this scenario. A surprise higher on the headline inflation here on the 12th uh, will be likely met with some fear, but also understanding that it's really mostly in those volatile prices for gasoline that, that have jumped so much over the last month. Uh, core inflation is still moderating, and, and that's what's important, uh, more than important than this bump higher in CPI, but it's going to balance out the good with the bad. Okay, against hopes for that eventual rate cut, uh, we still are contending with lower corporate profits and a weakening economy. So it's that kind of environment where investor sentiment is still good, but you know, hopeful, but still fearful and holding back some cash on the sidelines, which is going to create that kind of sideways choppy market. In this kind of scenario where the market just really goes nowhere, but kind of jumps up and down within that tight trading range, you would want to sell some options to help boost your returns. Uh, you could sell some call options with a strike price, maybe just 5% higher than the current price, collect that cash premium and really not have to worry about missing out on those returns if the market really just doesn't go anywhere. Uh, conversely, you could also sell some put options on stocks that you like, knowing that unless those stocks fall, uh, then you're really just going to keep the premium in and won't have to do anything. Uh, even in this scenario, though, analysts aren't saying that stock prices will never go up. Okay, so only that they they're think they're going to chop sideways for at least through the end of the year and while continuing this year's bull market. So with that in mind, you still want to have some exposure to stocks that, that eventually are going to trend higher. And of course, we do have this loan standout option, the 5% odds of a technical correction. It just seems like JP Morgan really trying to cover its bases here by putting some chance of a drop of 10% or more in stocks. That way, if it happens, analysts can save their jobs by saying they did say there was a chance if it actually comes. Now, this would have to be really the worst case scenario on all fronts for news. Uh, it would have to include higher core inflation, not just the headline inflation, but actually core inflation without gasoline and food prices would have to be rising further. The Fed would have to go back to talking about hiking interest rates to, to bring down that inflation once again. Uh, the economy would also have to slow down considerably, threatening a recession once again. So these are pretty long odds that we get anything more than about a 7% pullback. Though remember that in those volatile, high-flying stocks, you're going to see a bigger pullback if the market does even come down just a little. So you're going to see 10 to 20% drop in your, your most volatile stocks, even if the small market drop of that 3 to 7%. Uh, I wouldn't cover this uh, scenario with any put options if you're worried about it. You might just hold maybe a little bit more 5% of, of your portfolio in cash, another 10 to 15% in bonds. Just in case we do get that correction, you can use those bonds. You can use that cash to buy into stocks at those lower prices. Your short-term bonds are paying at a very nice 5% right now, which is a solid return just to wait out the market. Uh, don't wait too long, though, because the overwhelming odds here are for higher markets. Stocks always eventually go up, and it's looking now better than usual. 
I want to detail some of the stocks I'm watching this week. We're wrapping up earnings this week already with about 90% of the market already reporting earnings. First, we have here Medical Properties Trust, ticker MPW. It's going to be reporting its earnings on Tuesday with shares already up 37% from that May low and, and still paying a very attractive 11.7% dividend yield. Watch for an update on the company's tenant problems around Steward and Prospect Medical, along with any guidance on current year FFO or funds from operations. We are starting to see operations recover at hospitals and servicers, which should positively affect healthcare REITs. So I am still holding Medical Properties Trust. It's a great long-term dividend stock that will continue to pay you that cash flow. I'm also watching AMC Entertainment. Ticker AMC is going to be reporting Tuesday as well, with analysts expecting a loss of $0.04 cents a share for the quarter on $1.3 billion in revenue. Now, the theater chain could give a surprisingly positive outlook for the third quarter on success of Barbie and the Oppenheimer films, but we'll need to address the 2024 weakness related to the writers and, and actors' strike. Okay, management is also likely to talk up a new proposed settlement to convert those ape shares, the ticker APE. If that conversion is not allowed, the company is going to have to issue more of those ape preferred shares since it's not allowed to issue more common shares. That's the problem it had earlier, later last year, why it issued these ape shares, because according to its uh, bylaws for the corporation, it cannot, uh, it cannot issue more common shares. So to raise funding, which it desperately needs to stay out of bankruptcy, it has to issue these preferred shares and then convert them into common shares. So it's by far the more costly option to issue more preferred shares. So I still believe AMC and investors are going to reach an agreement eventually, convert those ape shares into common shares. So I would be investing in the in the ape shares right now as opposed to the, to the shares of AMC. Rivian Automotive, ticker RIVN, is also going to be reporting its Q2 earnings Tuesday after the shares have surged 87% just in the last month alone on strength across those EV makers. The company could up its current year production target from 50,000 vehicles, a number that is really seen as over conservative anyway. The market is actually expecting production of closer to about 60,000 plus vehicles this year. I believe that's what it's going to take to keep this uh, keep this price momentum going. Anything less could be a disappointment. Okay, Rivian is expected to post a loss of over $5 a share this year and still several years from profitability, but estimates have the car maker posting $4.1 billion in sales. It'd be a 140% increase from last year. So anything along those terms, along those lines, could help the stock keep that momentum. Even after the jump in price, though, shares are not especially expensive. I do own shares of Rivian here. It is trading at 5.8 times expected revenue. That is well under the 8 times multiple on Tesla and the 13.8 times sales for shares of Lucid Group. Alibaba Group, ticker BABA, going to be reporting its earnings on Thursday with an improved outlook for the Chinese e-commerce leader. Not only could the company benefit from an economic recovery in the country, but also has several upcoming catalysts on its own. Its financial subsidiary, Ant Financial, has restructured in a way to get approval for a Hong Kong IPO in shares. Uh, Alibaba owns more than a third of the company and is going to benefit from that listing. Investor sentiment could also improve as it progresses towards Alibaba's plan to split into six companies, with an IPO expected for its logistics unit by within, really within the next several months. At $96 a share here, it's not as easy bet as it was just over the last few months under $80 a share, but I still believe we'll see $120 plus per share over the next year in this stock. It's going to be a quiet week for economic news until we get to that Thursday CPI report. But I wanted to bring up something I've seen in the market over the last couple of weeks with earnings. Have you noticed lately that even companies beating their earnings expectations for earnings are seeing their stock prices fall? I mean, most of the market, about 84%, has already reported its earnings with an average decline of about 5.2% in profits on a year-over-year -year basis. Uh, that's better than the decline of 7.2% that the market was expecting at the beginning of the earnings. Uh, and in fact, 79% of companies have reported beating their earnings expectations. That's above the 10-year average of 73%. But you know, either way, yeah, it's an easy game to play for corporations. They, they lower expectations early in the quarter just so they can beat them when earnings actually come out. And you would expect that to push stocks higher when they beat those earnings expectations. That has not been the case, though. This is a chart from Facts that they track all the earnings and the stock reactions in the market. Companies reporting a positive surprise in earnings are seeing their stock prices fall on average half a percent on average over the four days around reporting. Okay, that's two days before and two days after they report their earnings. They're seeing the stock price fall on average half a percent, even for the companies that beat their earnings. That is the left side here. It's usually a 1% bump. Those companies that beat their average or beat their estimates usually see their stock prices up 1% over that period. They're now seeing those stocks fall. Of course, it's much worse for the uh, stocks that miss expectations. Those are also getting hit, getting seen prices fall too 
2.5%, 2.4% on average versus that 2.2% drop over the last decade. And what this is, it's really just a sign of near-term profit-taking and investor exhaustion in a market that's already gone up 20% when, when that's good news isn't good enough to support stock prices. Stocks in the S&P 500 are already trading at 23 times their earnings. That is about 10% higher than this long-term average we see here, just above 20. So you see here the 12-month PE ratio, price to earnings ratio for stocks in the S&P 500 trading right above right above that 22 times 23 times that is above the five-year average in green there that is well above the 10-year average with the blue dashed line so valuations are being used as a very good excuse for profit taking that could pull us down another two or three percent in that pullback scenario that we saw from JP Morgan but that should improve the valuations to the point where investors can jump back in buy the dip and see stock prices head higher into the next year Click on the video to the right for the five ETFs that Warren Buffett would be buying right now. Five ETFs that give you exposure to stocks that Warren Buffett is buying. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money. <clears throat> don't forget to don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.